wonderful speaker, Galen Foes. Um, he is a psychotherapist and he has a lot of information on this stuff. <laughs> Thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. I want to thank uh, Janae and Martha and, and the Center for Gender Equity for inviting me to come speak on this very timely topic right now. And I really want to bless those of you who have shown up tonight because it's still kind of a conversation that's kind of on the down low or, or not had at all on the other extreme. And it, it's a very important part of, the, like, of our so human psyche, our human sexual experience, to have these kind of conversations in kind of a mature adult manner. And that's the conversation that as in hell didn't happen when I grew up, and it's certain most people don't grow up in a, a where we have a good sex education program where our youth are being invited into the realm of responsible sexuality and also the depth and the breadth of that sexuality and also the diversity of that sexuality and how to engage it in a conscious way that's in integrity with your values and uh, interactions consensually conducted with your partner. So you're kind of in the vanguard of this right now just by showing up here tonight. So I just really want to honor you for the courage to cross through that threshold because I would imagine that still even at this date in time that there's still many people who well, I'd like to go to that, but gee, what if so-and-so sees me walking through that door? I walk in and somebody I know is there or such things. So I, I think that is changing. I'm grateful that it's changing. I'm grateful for you and the generations that are to come that it's changing so that we can have this conversation together about uh, what's true about our sexuality. So this is... Uh, a uh, conversation that's being generated by the uh, rise of this uh, phenomenon, Fifty Shades of Grey. You know, 100 million books, millions of, 300 million or something like that the first weekend and movie sales. So this is, this is tapping uh, something in the psyche that's wanting to come out. And it, this is just kind of like the peak of the iceberg of this long journey that Eros has taken to, to arrive at this point as, as I look at it. Um, what's coming alive is some part of the human unconscious, the sexual psyche that's responding to this symbolic mythic story that's being portrayed and that's how I look at it. It's, it's tapping into a mythos within or nobody would go to it. Nobody would buy the book. So it's resonating something deep within people that has yearned to come out. And this has really brought us to an unprecedented stage in the history of civilization. As I look at it, there's never been this much sexuality roaming around the planet uh, and coming to uh, availability. And it is due mostly to the internet that uh, has opened up this channel of the human psyche that wasn't really allowed before in previous generations. You know, we've turned our gaze away. When we have sex, you know, we turn the lights out, turn our gaze away, roll over at the end, and, and there's not a lot of engagement uh, of ourselves, at least in quote unquote vanilla realms of sexuality, where there's much uh, of a range brought in to really appreciate. And what's, what, you're, what people are missing when they don't have this broader conversation is, is the ecstatic depths that one's personal sexuality and the expression of it can offer. So, I have to kind of jump over here to get going. I'm going to talk uh, a little bit about the, what the Fifty Shades of Grey phenomenon is accessing as I look at it in, in the unconscious. And what's resonating is this range of sexuality that I call fetish sexuality. That's not a term you're going to hear or have heard very often because it's not really being used. I'm kind of bringing it into the conversation because I believe from my work over the last 15 years as a therapist with clients and leading workshops that I teach conscious DSP, DSM oriented sexuality to men, women, and couples about how to engage it in a healthy, 
consensual negotiated way uh, that we are uh, engaging this part of the, the sexual psyche that I call fetish sexuality, which is equivalent, as I look at it, to gay, lesbian, bi, and straight, and now kind of transsexual has entered into the conversation. In fact, we're in an era where the, de the definition of sexual orientation has just kind of gotten blown out of the water. You know, there's, uh, we're in an era where besides fetish and the other four I mentioned, and uh, I say that because right now the American Psychiatry Association only defines four sexual identities. The, the ones I said, straight, gay, bi, lesbian, uh, are the four, period. But if you look at what the definition of a sexual identity is, it's someone with an innate, inherent, lifelong desire for a particular, in this case, they call it gender, uh, by their definition, that also seeks to engage in relationships in that style and also in community in that style. So to me, that's really, we're in an era where that is no longer an adequate definition to allow this range of sexuality that's coming to the fore. And being in a sex negative culture like we are in, sex, not only sex negative, but uh, sex unintelligent, you know, we, we don't have much intelligence going on around, uh, one, how we teach sexuality. So for instance, sex education uh, is really way inadequate, if even allowed. You know, I mean, it's a struggle, it's a fight in the school systems to re even introduce basic sex education for our adolescents. Uh, and even worse, we don't even allow sex education for adults, you know, to bring ourselves up to speed uh, on really all the changes that are going on. So it's really an exciting time in terms of this era of sexual expression that we're ending into, but it's also a very, at a very adolescent stage, it's still kind of wild and irresponsible and reckless, uh, uninformed, irresponsible. And that's why the sex education uh, in, a, in the broadest sense is important to bring in because uh, people are going to bring, get themselves into situations uh, through those lack of understandings that are gonna create uh, issues either perceived or actual uh, that could have been dealt with through clear communication and transparency and a, a firm understanding of one's own uh, sexuality. So before I go into that depth more around specifically around fetish, fetish sexuality, uh, I mentioned that there's this, this kind of explosion of different sexual expressions coming to fore from, you know, ecosexual, asexual, poly, uh, trans, uh, as uh, I said asexual, but there, there's just queer, you know, bi there's just more than is, is going to fit under the, the lid of previous uh, definitions of sexuality. 